What I would like to talk to you about is what really is the essence of the Jesus methodology. Why should you devote time, energy, maybe even money to listen to our lectures and hopefully even to practice this methodology in your company? Here is why. We live in time of change, significant change, accelerated change. You probably know it because you experience it. When what happens when there is change? There are problems. Because something new is happening. Now you have to decide what to do. And you have to take risk because you might do the wrong, the wrong thing. So which company is going to succeed? And we have proven this. This is not a research done in the library. We have been working in over 72 countries for over 50 years, testing the methodology, improving the methodology, perfecting the methodology. So why is it successful? Why is it successful? Because who is going to succeed in this environment, accelerated rate of change, with risks left and right. New technologies, new government with a different approach, or even religiously inclined. Who is going to succeed? Who can make better decisions? When, although there is uncertainty, because there is change, and who can reduce the risk. That's it. And we have taken companies from 12 million in sales to 4 billion in sales. And the owner is still 100% owner. So it's organic growth. And it's not only one company. We took Domino Pizza, also from 150 million to 4 billion. Owner still 100% owner. How? Huh. By making better decisions, teaching companies how to make better decisions in time of change, and how to reduce risk. So how do you make better decisions? You alone cannot make good decisions all the time and never fail. Doesn't exist. You're not, nobody is that smart. Nobody is that wise. Nobody is that experienced. You will eventually make a mistake. You have to. So what should we do? Find the genius who makes the least number of mistakes. You know what the problem is? There are not enough geniuses in the world for all the companies. We need a company that can be managed by a normal person. Because there are not too many geniuses. Maybe, by the way, if you have a genius leading the company, that's pretty good, but not in the long run. Why? Eventually it will die. And then what happens to the company when the genius dies? Find another genius? Or maybe he has a son or a daughter who is a genius. This is a very improbable solution. We need something normal. So what I recommend in the methodology is build a complementary, complementary team. People that are different in styles, that complement each other. Because each one of them sees different problems, sees different issues. It's like blind people trying to describe an elephant. One sees a long nose. Another one sees a big leg. Another one sees an enormous stomach. They put the information together and they say, aha, it's an elephant. We need a complementary team. The entrepreneur has a vision. He sees the market, he sees the competition, he sees opportunities. He does not see the problem of implementation. The administrator 
Sensul nu nu o este un moment. O este un moment. De ce problem ir, de ce problem da. Te simți diferit X. And the third person says, guys, let's focus on what do we need to do today. Stop talking about opportunities or problems. Let's go and do something. And the fourth person says, guys, let's listen to each other. Uh, why are you fighting? Why don't you listen? He looks at the people to build harmony. They're different. But they need each other. Like you need your wife or your husband in order to raise the children. You cannot raise the children alone. Easily. If we have a complementary team that works with each other with mutual respect, what does it mean? They're not upset that the other person thinks differently. Okay, you think differently. What can I learn from it? What are you trying to tell me? And by learning from each other, different judgments, different information, different outlook, different values, What happens? We make a better decision. If you can create a learning environment in your company and you have a complementary team, you will make better decisions than the other company is managed by a genius. But in order to work together, you have to learn how to work together. You have to learn how to listen to each other. That is the that methodology, half of it. What is the other half? How do you reduce risk? Look, you cannot work alone. You need the cooperation of other people, right? If they will cooperate with you, you have lower risk than if they don't cooperate. If they don't cooperate, your risk is higher. Why? Because you you want to have a ho horse, and they, because they don't cooperate, they deliver a camel. Risk is much higher. If you can reduce risk by having cooperation, wow your risk is much lower. So if you have a complementary team and you have cooperation, if you have cooperation and collaboration, both collaboration for decision-making, cooperation for implementation, you have a better decision, lower risk. But how do you get cooperation? Why would people cooperate? Because they share your interests. We have common interests. And if we have common interest, we are going to cooperate. Problem. There is no common interest ongoing. That's utopia. That's expecting too much. People have different interests, even in the family. The wife has one interest, the husband has another interest. The children have a totally different interest. And the parents in law have different interests. Wow. So what do we do? Ah, life is give and take. Give and take. That's how you make a good marriage. Give and take. You know? Not everything is important. Important to you, we do it your way. When it's important to me, do it my way. We accommodate each other. Life is give and take. And somebody from the audience told me, that's not what we say in Turkish. In Turkish we say, not give and take. We say, take and give. Wow. There's a big difference. It's not just a grammatical exchange. No, no, no. It's a difference in attitude. When you say life is give and take, there is trust. I give because I trust you will reciprocate what is important to me. I'm not afraid. I'm not just going to give and you're going to disappear. You're going to reciprocate. We have a relationship, like in a good friendship. I take you to dinner, then you take me to dinner, you know. I come to your home, then you come to my home. But the moment you say life is not give and take, but take and give, oops, there is no trust. First I take, and then I will think whether I want to give. What makes cooperation possible is mutual trust. And if there is no trust, people don't cooperate. 
they look to how they can maneuver, how they can take advantage. Totally different environment. The purpose of a disease methodology is to bring a climate, a culture, a relationship in a company that is based on mutual trust and respect. That's it. The moment you have mutual trust and respect, the company is managed better. You don't waste energy inside, in internal fighting. All the energy is against the competition, because internally we are working together. You know, the symbol is the Mediterranean symbol for a Disney methodology, the Hamza. Look at the Hamza. What do you see? Figures together, although they are different. That is a blessing. Be different, but together. Don't try to be together by being the same. You know what this is? Religious fanatism, communism, fascism. We are going to be together by being the same. And what happens? We are paralyzed. That's why communism failed. That's why in the long run fascism fails. That's why religious fanaticism stops the growth of a country. The solution is different together. And what is a curse? Different, not together. In the Middle East, when you do this to a person's face, you're saying a curse. Be different and not together. A Jesus is how to create togetherness. To recognize each other's differences and to still be together. And in this hand, which is the most important figure? Not this one. This one. Why? Because he makes every figure work together. This is the only figure that can work with any other figure. And our job is to make you a manager, a leader, a supervisor, any leader of any level, work like a thumb and not like a pointing finger, which is a cultural change. We will help you change your culture because if you want to be successful, and grow and grow and grow and be happy, not just grow, but happy, happy about your growth. You need to learn how to be different and still work together. That is a decent methodology. Does it work? It works depending on you. Much less on us. We are there to serve you. We are there. Are you there? how committed you are, because there is going to be resistance. People don't like to change from this figure to this figure. They still like to manage this way, the autocratic way. To become an integrator, to listen, to work with others, not to be upset when they disagree with you, but to try to learn. That's not easy. People are going to resist it. So you as the leader, are you committed? If you are not committed, it's not going to work. It's like taking medicine. I want to be healthy, but I'm not committed to take my medicine. Halas, it's not going to work. If you are committed, you will learn a new methodology that will help not only your company, will help your marriage. I have a book, How to Apply Methodology to Marriage. When we work on a country level with prime ministers, how to bring this culture to a country. So, I wish you to learn this methodology. I pray that you apply the methodology because you will benefit from it and my lifetime's work will be realized. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.